guys, it's Tilly and I'm doing an update on my NaNoWriMo for you all. There will be swearing in this video because I find that in this point of time it is definitely needed for me to uh, get all of my feelings out about my NaNoWriMo so far. How far is my NaNoWriMo coming along? It's fucking not. I haven't written in a fucking week. And what I have written has been absolute trash. Like, I think the packet of crisps I just threw in the bin sounds better than what I've written. And to be honest, the only reason I haven't deleted what I've written is because I needed that word count. And even then, I'm only sitting on, like, just over 14,000 words. And for some reason, like, I look really fucking pissed off about it, but I'm actually, like, kind of chilled out. I'm not really letting NaNoWriMo affect my mood too much, like, I'm still so much in love with my story that it doesn't matter if it's going to take me a month to rewrite it, or whether it's going to take me three months or a year to rewrite it, as long as I still like my characters and I still like where it's going and how much it has improved since the first draft I've done, that I'm kind of happy with that. I honestly don't think I'm going to finish NaNoWriMo for the first time ever, but you know, I'm totally okay with that. This is 2016, bad things happen, but we all endure and we're going to get through it. So, fuck you, NaNoWriMo story. <laughs> anyway, you guys know about my characters, and if you don't know about my characters, I will leave a link below to the character vlog that I did of my NaNoWriMo, like, at the start of the month. I introduced you to my six main characters, who are coincidentally six amazing soldiers who are on a mission of their life. I don't think I've actually told you guys explicitly like what happens in my story, so I'm gonna do that for you. You guys will find out my storyline, or I'm gonna get like totally passive aggressive and swear at myself a lot. So don't hurt my feelings. Uh, basically, the way that I picture my book is that it is actually going to be like a five book series uh, because you know why would you just start with one book? You would just want to completely ruin yourself and fuck everything up by writing five. So that's what I've decided to do. So basically the first book is just meeting my characters and getting people very attached to my characters because what's better than, you know, just killing people randomly than killing off characters that people really like. Yes, I am that kind of writer. So we have my six main characters and basically these are just trained soldiers, they don't really know what they're doing, um, the king hasn't given them any advice on what their future holds. They're kind of on the assumption that they're just going to go and be sent to like, the border tower, that's where most of the other soldiers go, but at the same time they do definitely have priorities over regular soldiers, like the king keeps them in, a, in the side of the palace, um, he had them tutored every single day from a young age, in fact he sits with them himself, he sends them out on missions daily, so obviously they're not just regular soldiers, but to them they're starting to think like what could he possibly want them for, but the king definitely has plans for them and those plans, you know, they plans. So my soldiers start off this book, they're on a mission capturing basically this big gang leader and they return him to the king and pretty much he gets arrested and put into the dungeons and then the king is like, you guys can, you know, go away for the day, relax, you know, you guys did good. And then he calls in our protagonist who is called Arnsley and pretty much tells her that he's sending the group on this once in a lifetime mission. This will deem what their future will hold and basically it's going to be the first mission they do outside of the palace walls. So they know something's happening then, um, they've got to pretty much find uh, this posing country who they are pretty much at the brink of war with, um, they have sent their general over the line which is completely out of the terms of the contract, so they're going to find this general and bring him back to the king. So they have to travel pretty much, um, they all have their own horses and it starts off that way. One day ride out of the palace and they run into trouble, they find a Baltine regiment that has completely attacked these civilian merchants. and a small battle ensues and you kind of see what the characters are like in these situations. Things don't go too well so the Baltine group managed to get a few soldiers away so they are going to pretty much go and send word to this general that's supposed to capture. So they're going to have to change their entire plan of attack now and go secretly to him. So they continue on their journey, not staying in any inns, they're not trying to alert anyone that they're there, so they're staying really covert and like camping out and getting angry with each other and stressing and also very excited because this is like their first big mission. After this they're going to be able to figure things out and they're happy to get outside the city walls and just hang out together. 
I'm gonna have to like draw a map for this because it's like super confusing even in my head but basically the place where the general is staying is on the edge of a cliff and so originally they were just gonna plan on dressing up as the other soldiers and going inside but once they get there they realize it's a really tough situation they have no chance at all of just basically walking through the front gates. Arnsley who has this mind at picking up really different and outrageous plans of attack, she decides that the best way to do it is to climb up the cliffside because obviously that's how you're going to do it. Because from observing for a few hours she realised they have no protection at the back of the house where this general is staying because who's going to be stupid enough to climb up the side of the fucking cliff? Them. And they go into this place and they have their plan plotted out which I will figure out when I'm writing because Shit, man, that's gonna be tough. Like, it's gonna be something that's not only gonna surprise the readers, surprise myself, but also surprise the characters. They're on this chase from the general. They have to make a really quick getaway when they've got hold of him because um, people are now alerted that they're also in the building and one thing leads to another and one of these precious characters end up dying. Then the general is also killed in the middle of all this mishap, which isn't too bad. Like, the order from the king was to have him dead or alive, preferably alive, but... You know, you can't really help it in some situations. So then the other five members of our team managed to escape and um, we actually witnessed like the ride back and how this death affects certain characters who were their friends with them and it's like hopefully going to be really emotional and pull on all of your heartstrings because like even my thought of this character dying absolutely kills me. And I literally wrote this character in to die and they became my favourite character and it's going to gut me. Like, I already feel like fucking crying. And then as for the rest of the books in the series, it's going to have different, like, things happen. Um, there's going to be two wars during the entire series. Um, there is going to be plenty of character deaths happening. And I also really want to deal with PTSD in this book as well and people that don't always have happy endings. So I just want to say that, like, it's going to be one of those series where characters aren't going to be safe even if they're a main character or a favourite character. No one really is going to be okay and it's going to have realistic aspects kind of woven throughout it and hopefully it'll all just come together really nicely but I don't actually know. Shit that was a lot of talking. <laughs> So there you guys have the actual like plots to my book, my first one. That is not subject to stay the same. Things can change very easily. Every time like I write the blurb, it always sounds like shit. So I haven't actually successfully written one yet. And maybe it still does sound like shit. I don't really know because I am too invested in this story to even take a step back and look at it as an outsider. So yay for 14,000 words, nay for not being able to write 50,000 in one month. I just know now it's not going to happen, but don't fear, I'm still going to try to do it. I'm just happy that like things are going well, to be honest. So you guys should definitely leave a comment below and let me know how your NaNoWriMo was going or what stories you guys are currently writing or just anything about you. Like, how are you guys? Are you guys okay? Are you, are you still happy? Are you reading lots? I love you guys. So anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon and until then have a lovely bookish day and hopefully great things happen to you. Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I'm here with another TF unboxing and if you guys don't know already, I pretty much love the YA Chronicles so I'm going to tear straight into this, I'm going to rip it open and I'm going to show you every damn good thing that's inside of this box.